Exodus 12 and 1. And it states, And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aharon in the land of Mitzrayim, saying... So let's take a look at some characteristics of Mitzrayim or Egypt that correlate to this nation. Okay. We've got many gods. How many agree? In um, Mitzrayim, there were many gods. In this nation, there are many gods. I hear a lot of Christian uh, ministers, preachers, bashing uh, President Obama because he says that this is not necessarily a Christian nation. It's not. So I don't know where people get up, but this, this is what happens when um, you feel that you, because what you believe is what everyone else believes. And that's a misconception. So in this um, nation, is much looks much like Mitzrayim with many gods. Then there's a social hierarchy. In uh, Mitzrayim, there was a social hierarchy, which was um, you had your uh, royalty that was in one area. Then you had people that would actually work for those who were in position, and then there was the poor. Is that not the same that we have today? Yes. And now there's another level in the United States which they call the working poor. Interesting. The working poor. Those are those the are people who um, don't make, they make under the um, minimum wage, or they make minimum wage, what is it? They make poverty. under the poverty level. Absolutely. They make under the poverty level, so they are, but they do work. So they don't make enough uh, specifically to be able to live uh, where people who are, would say, middle class. Now, we used to be middle class. But the, the middle class is being squeezed out more and more as we continue on in this social climate. So social hierarchy what is one of the correlations with Mitzrayim in the United States. Then also world power. Mitzrayim, for many uh, dynasties, I think there are uh, 21 dynasties, I believe, or, I'm sorry? 25 dynasties, is it? Okay, 25 dynasties of, uh, of uh, Mitzrayim or Egypt before um, Queen uh, Cleopatra came in and then with, uh, who was from Alexander the Great, that whole thing within it, uh, Mitzrayim was then taken into um, Roman rule. So for many, many dynasties, 25 dynasties, Mitzrayim was a uh, world power. And then we have United States as also being classified as a world power today. Then we have multicultural. Uh, Mitzrayim in Egypt, it was very a very multicultural society, um, much like it is today. That's why it's ridiculous for anybody to bash the president when he says it's not a Christian nation because it is so multicultural. Um, there are so many people from so many different uh, countries, so many different walks that have come and made the United States their home. So that makes our society much like uh, the Egyptian society. Um, and then also, this is a big one, Israel is present. Also in uh, Mitzrayim, in Egypt, you had the presence of the Hebrews. Israel was present there, and then we have the United States. Israel is present here. Hallelujah. Okay, if you know you're Israel, hallelujah. hallelujah. Israel, yes. Israel is present. Yes, hallelujah. We are in Mitzrayim, just looking at those five points. So let's look at some Passover basics. 
uh, Exodus 12 and 2 says, this month is the beginning of months for you. It is the first month of the year for you. So what does that tell us right there? Hallelujah. Happy New Year. <laughs> this is actually the new year yeah. where things are coming to life. Things are budding. Life is happening. It's the beginning of the new year, opposed to the thought of uh, Yom Teruah being the beginning of the new year. So we, when we look at things, we look at um, the creation. We look at in Bereshit, we see the, the earth coming to life. It didn't, he didn't start out in the, in the fall with things falling away, but he started out with things coming to life. On the third day, we see the, the, the uh, water separating and the, the vegetation coming up in the land, on the land. So that's how we know that that was the beginning of the year. That was the beginning of time. So we see that, as he says, this, is, this month is the beginning of months for you. Then he goes on to say in Exodus 3, speak to all the congregation of Israel saying, on the 10th day of this month, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb. According to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Then four, and if the household is too small for the lamb, let them, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the beings according to each man's need. You make your count for the lamb. Let the lamb be a perfect one. One year, a year, yes, one, it'd be a perfect one. A year old male. Take it from the sheep or from the goats and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the evenings hallelujah and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it. And they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not leave it raw, nor boil it at, at all with water, but roast it in fire as its head with its legs and its inward parts and do not leave of it until morning this is the only place where father Yahweh says to eat all of the entrails all of the inward parts it's to be eaten all of it that Passover lamb at that time then he goes on to say, and do not leave in 10, Exodus 12 and 10, and do not leave of it until morning. And what remains of it until morning, you are to burn with fire. And this is how you are to eat it. And this is how you eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste, it is the Passover of Yahweh. And then Exodus, we're going to jump down to Exodus 12 and 14. And this day shall become to you a remembrance. Everybody say remembrance. Remembrance. Yes. And you shall observe it as a festival to Yahweh throughout your generations. Observe it as a festival, an everlasting law. Someone say everlasting law. Everlasting law. Hallelujah. When does everlasting stop? Never. 
Never. Okay, so what happens if a person is not able to perform the Passover in the first month? These are Passover basics. Numbers 9 and 10 tells us. Speak to the children of Israel, saying, when any male of you or your generations is unclean for a being or is far away on a journey, he shall still perform the Passover of Yahweh. Numbers 11. On the 14th day of the second month between the evenings, they, shall, they perform it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They eat it. So, Passover basics, Talmudin. If a person is not able to perform the Passover in the first month, what do they do? 30 days, hmm? 30 days later. 30 days later, hallelujah. Father Yahweh gives us a window of 30 days. You can't do the Passover. There's all kinds of reasons that a person could be unclean ceremonially. If a person has handled, had to handle a dead uh, body, if someone has passed away in their family, someone has to handle that body and be, they would become unclean. Therefore, that person would give, be given the opportunity to then 30 days later after they're clean, 30 days later, they can take the Passover. We serve a faithful and wonderful Elohim. Hallelujah. Next. So, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do during that time? Did you stop the recording? Oh, yes. What do we do? What do we do during Passover? So as you can see up here, we have, you have um, a heart, and then you have the house. The same thing that we do for the heart, we do for the house. So let's read out loud what we do for the heart. Search our hearts for sin. I, everyone, can we read together? Search our hearts for sin, and then circumcise our hearts. Now, what do we do for the house? Search our homes for leaven, and then clear all the leaven out. Now, let's go ahead and read. Can y'all see that at the bottom? Yes. Okay. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Indeed, on the first day, you cause leaven to cease from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that being shall be cut off from Israel. Okay. So we see that when uh, Father Yahweh is telling us at the time before Passover, we need to be preparing. Okay, so we don't want to wait till Passover, the day before Passover, to begin searching our hearts for sin. That should be something that we're doing constantly. Constantly we should be looking at ourselves in the mirror, checking ourselves out, checking ourselves against the Torah to see how we line up. How do we line up against the Torah? How do we line up against uh, loving each other? How do we line up against studying the word of Yahweh so that we know what sin is? We can't do that the day before Passover. That's like someone saying, well, I'll wait until I get to death's door and then I'll repent and I'll get saved then. But what if... Yes. <laughs> what if you, it's something that hits you and you don't have a chance to open your mouth and repent? That's not a good plan. We should be checking our hearts for sin, circumcising our own hearts. In 
um, Devarim or Deuteronomy 10 and 16, Father Yahweh says, and you shall circumcise the foreskin of your heart and harden your neck no more. He also says in, in Devarim or Deuteronomy 30 and 6, and Yahweh your Elohim shall circumcise. So see what happens. He shall circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being, so that you might live. Hallelujah. So he tells us, look at this scenario. Father Yahweh is so wonderful, and he always goes the extra mile. He always gives us double for what we do. He tells us, I want you to circumcise your heart. I want you to circumcise your heart. All we can say is, Father Yahweh, I'm circumcising my heart. Do I absolutely know what that means and how to do that? But then he comes right back in 30 and he says, that I'll circumcise your heart. And not only will I do that for you, then I'll circumcise the hearts of your children. Mm -hmm. So that you can live. He doesn't leave us out there trying to figure out how many know what actually on a, on a, 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 a literal, in a literal standpoint, how you circumcise your heart. Tell me that. See? Nobody has a clue. How do you circumcise your heart? Give it love. Hmm? Give it love. Give it love. Valerie? Um, the desires. Mm -hmm. you, you gotta recognize is it of Yahweh or not. Mm -hmm. So if you get rid of those earthly desires that's not like of Yahweh, mm -hmm. you're circumcising your heart. You're circumcising your heart. But the main the, the thing is, we don't always know. We don't always know, you know, they're not always surface level. That's why I used to, I've always prayed. I've, I started doing this years and years ago before we came into this walk. Father Yahweh, bring, bring the sin up. There, if anything is in there, I'm asking you to bring it up to the top. Like curdled milk. When you put milk on the, on, the, on the stove and you boil it, and you skim that skim, you have to skim that fat off the top. Father, bring it up to the top so I can skim it off because I don't always know what's deep down in there. Things, thoughts, situations, stuff I have against people who did stuff when I was a child. Sometimes we bury those things. But we have to be able to want to love him and have a relationship with him more than we want to hate that person. We have to want to love him and have a relationship more than that, that thing that's killing us, that, that relationship that is, that's there, that shouldn't be there. We have to love him more and want a relationship with him more than that, circumcising our hearts. Father, we don't always know what that means, but Father Yahweh, what you've given us is a promise that if we will not harden our neck to him and to what he says, that's part of the circumcision of our heart. And that he came back and he said, then I will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed. Then guess what will happen then? then you'll love me with all your heart, with all your being, so that you might live. Hallelujah. He is an awesome and faithful father. The word circumcised is, is mul. Mul. And it's um, H4135. And it, in that scripture, uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 6, um, 10 and 16, or 10 is, yes, 10 and 16. It, the word um, is vumult, vumultim, and because it's plural. 
to be circumcised or to be cut off. But isn't it awesome, only Father Yahweh could do this, that he would tell us to cut something off so that we're not cut off. Mm. I want you to cut something off so that you're not cut off. And then it goes on in, in Exodus 12 and 15. It says, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Indeed, on the first day, on the first day, you cause leaven to cease from your houses. For whosoever eats unleavened or eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that being shall be cut off from Israel. The word that is used for leaven there is chamas, and it means to ferment or to swell. But it also means, and I was looking at this this morning, I said, wow, that's awesome. It also means to extort. The action of obtaining something by threat or force. So as I looked at that word extort, what do you do to that bread when you are making it into a loaf and you want it to rise? You are causing it, causing it to rise out of its own will. It, it doesn't have the, the, the will to rise. It's just what, it's bread, it's flour. Flour and water which probably would be pretty nasty, I tell you, I don't know how to make bread. Flour and water. But once you add the leavening agent, then it forces the flour and the water to do something that it wouldn't normally do. So that word, chamatz, leaven, also depicts that same thing, to force something or for something or threaten something to do what it doesn't normally do. So let's move on to the Seder itself. Now this is just going over stuff, like I said, this is just going over things. I think there's Father Yahweh is given some things that may bring up, um, uh, up something that, that will cause what you've learned in the past to enhance it. Um, but we're going to just go through the Seder really quick. The curious items, salt water, your parsley, your bitter herbs, your lamb bone or lamb shank bone, and then you chop apple mixture. Now, who can tell me from the children what the salt water represents? Why do we use salt water? Eat from your hand was up first. Absolutely, the saltiness to remember the tears of slavery, of being enslaved, the cries. The word says in Exodus, and the, the cries of Israel went up to the Father, and he heard them, and he delivered them. Now, who can tell me amongst the children what the parsley, what do we do with the parsley? Elise? What do we do with the parsley? Who else? Who else? What do we do with the parsley? Oh, say it nice and loud. We dip it good. We dip it in the salt water. And then we're able to eat the, salt, the uh, salty parsley. And then that tells us of the tears, but the parsley also represents the green, the newness of the, of the new year coming in. He said this will be the first of the, of the year, the first of months for you. So when we look at the parsley, we look at the parsley as being the greenness that's coming up from the earth, representative of that. And we use that also, it can also um, represent um, the hyssop that was used and when they dipped the uh, hyssop in the blood and put it on the doorpost. 
Your parsley has that same kind of consistency. The um, bitter herbs, who can tell me from the children what the bitter herbs is about? Elise? Okay, I'd like to see some other children answer, but go ahead, Elise. Very good, very, very good. The bitter herbs remind us of the bitterness of slavery and how slavery was, was so, it, it, it was, um, we know in this country, which is almost in a few years, it'll be 400 years, that um, our people were enslaved in this country. That um, we are looking at the, the harshness, the, the, the bitter whipping and, and all of that of the slave master. The same thing was happening over in Mitzrayim. Yes, we live in Mitzrayim. Yes, we do. Because that's another thing that we had, uh, the presence of Israel in Mitzrayim being slaves and the presence of Israel being in the United States being slaves. It was that bitterness of slavery. Okay, the lamb bone. Who can tell me of the young people? The lamb bone. What does the shank, the lamb bone stand for? Any one of y'all? Ephraim? Good. The lamb, he, if the lamb bone represents the lamb that was, that was, had given, it was sacrificed, gave his blood, the blood was then put on the doorpost, and that gave us the deliverance. Father Yahweh said, if you're, you're, um, the blood is on the doorpost, then I will pass over you. And that's what he did. So very good. Now the last one, chop apple mixture. What do we, why do we use that? What is that for? What does the chop apple mixture stand for? The chop apple mixture. Ephraim? So the chopped apple mixture is sweet. Is the chopped ap apple mixture sweet? Yeah. Okay. So what does it tell us? What was the what is sweet concerning this whole Passover thing? Go ahead, Sacconi. Oh, I know. Yes, you can. Oh, but I was saying the, the sweetness of uh, being free from slavery. Hallelujah. The sweetness of deliverance, of being freed from slavery. So let's look at the telling, the telling of the Passover. And it shall be, can everyone read with me? Can, if y'all can see that. And it shall, shall be, be when, when your, your children, children say to you, you what does this, this service mean, mean to you? you? That's Exodus 12 and 26. We are commanded by Yahweh to teach our children of this account. Every year, he tells us. Every year. So when people say black people in this country need to get over slavery, and if they are Hebrews, they are foolish. Because Yahweh has told us to remember our enslavement and the bitterness of slavery and being redeemed. He tells us to remember it every single year. Every year. So likewise, we remember being enslaved. And we remember the deliverance that Father Yahweh gave us so that we could be free. So every year we look at this. So, and on our children, when they ask us about this account, we teach them so they can 
see the curious items and learn what each one represents. Now, all of our youth, you learned what each one of those represented, right? Okay, so I should be able to come to each one of you and ask you what does the parsley represent? What does the parsley mean? What does the apple mixture mixture mean? What does the lamb shank bone mean? And you should not have to look in that Haggadah to know that. Because every year we say the same thing and what it means. The curious items you get to learn what each represents. Then you get to hear the historical scriptural account of Passover. You get to taste the bitterness of slavery with the parsley being dipped in the water. And then you get to taste the sweetness of deliverance when we take the matzah and we dip the matzah into the apple mixture. We get to do those things and our children get to experience that with all of their senses. And they get to touch the unleavened bread and they get, we get, even get to touch the grape drink when we dip our little finger in the, in the drink and, and put it on, the, on the, um, the napkins or on the plate. Speaking of all the plagues, they get to smell the different aromas of Passover. This is an awesome thing that we're doing, y'all. Father Yahweh has returned us back to his Moadim, and we get to teach our children. This is a beautiful thing. Yeah, hallelujah. This is awesome. Who'd have thought that we would be the generation that would return back to him? After thousands of generations, y'all. You know how many thousands of years they, were, they went out? Okay, little history lesson. When did the house of Israel in the northern kingdom go into Assyrian captivity? Seven, 722, 722 BC. The northern, the southern kingdom went into Babylonian captivity, 586 BC. Those are numbers that we should keep in our mind. Why? Because that gives us a frame of reference of time for how good Yahweh is that he came. Come on, y'all. That he chose us. Us. I don't even see y'all even excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that he passed all those generations of people. That's right. Do y'all get that? Yeah. That he chose Lamaris. How many generations of people did he skip to choose you? How many generations? Did he skip to choose us? That is an awesome thing. Hmm. That all those thousands of years ago, our people stood at the foot of Mount Sinai and went into covenant with the Most High. And then somebody, some brainiac decided, I don't want to do that anymore. We don't have to do this anymore. We don't have to serve that God anymore. You know what? Let's just not do that. Let's just go somewhere else and do something else. And now all these years later, he chose, he selected. I'm going to, I selected you from the womb. Hallelujah. In my mother's womb, in my mother's belly, he mentioned my name and ordained me to be in this place right here, right now. Seeking out his Torah, learning about his Sabbath, learning about his set apart feast days, learning how many generations did he skip who have died and gone on without knowing that they were Israel. How many to get to us? Father Yahweh is faithful. And he is awesome Elohim. So the unleavened bread. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound up in their garments on their shoulders. 
Exodus 12, 34. They didn't even have time for the bread to even try to leaven. Exodus 12, 39 says, and they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they had brought out of Mitzrayim, for it was not leavened since they were driven out. Hallelujah. Somebody say driven out. Driven yeah, you out. know what? People are saying a whole lot of stuff and getting, I, I, I am one for getting prepared. I am a planner. I like to know what's going to be happening. I like to know what I'm going to be doing. I'm just, I like that. I, that's just me. I like that. But here he says, since they were driven out of Mitzrayim, and they had not been able to delay, nor had they prepared food for themselves. Now, what does that sound like? You remember Yeshua said there'll be two on the mountain, two on the housetop. One will be taken, one will be left. And he said, and don't even go down to even get your coat. Just leave. Go. Time for preparing. Exodus 12 and 42, it says, It is a night to be observed unto Yahweh for bringing them out of the land of Mitzrayim. This night is unto Yahweh to be observed by all the children of Israel throughout their generations. And then he says in 43, and Yahweh said to Moshe and Aharon, this is the law of the Passover. No son of a stranger is to eat of it. 44, but any servant of a man has bought, but any servant a man has bought for silver when you have circumcised him, then let him eat of it. So, how can we lawfully eat of the Passover today according to the Torah of Passover? Has anybody ever thought about that? How can we legally How can we do the Passover? So let's look at Hosea 1 and 9. And we're going to hit on those points. Then he said, call his name Lo Amin. For you are not my people, and I am not for you. Then in 10, he says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which is not measured nor counted, and it shall be in the place where Yahweh, where it was said to them, you are not my people, they shall be called, you are the sons of the living El. Then Hosea 2, Hosea 2, all of chapter 2, it says, say, to your brothers, oh my people, and to your sisters, oh com um, compassioned one, strive with your mother, strive, for she is not my wife, nor am I her husband. This is the thought. How can we do, legally do, the Passover? For no, nor am I her husband. Let her Put away her whorings from her face and her adultery, adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and shall set her up as on the day she was born and shall make her like a wilderness and shall set her like a dry land and shall put her to death with thirst and I shall not have compassion on her children for they are the children of whorings for their mother has whored she who conceived them has acted shamelessly for she said I go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my linen and my oil and my drink. Therefore, see, I am hedging 
um, hedging up your way with thorns, and I shall wall her in so that she does not find her paths, and she shall pursue her lovers but not overtake them, and shall seek them but not find them. Then she shall say, let me go and return to my first husband, for then it was better for me than now. Mm. And she did not acknowledge that I gave her grain and new wine and oil and increased her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Therefore, I shall turn back and shall take my grain in its time and my new wine in its season, and I shall take away my wool and my linen covering her nakedness, and now I shall uncover her shame. And before the eyes of her lovers, and no one shall deliver her from my hand. Mm, 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 mm. And I shall cause all her rejoicing, her festivals, her new moons, her Sabbaths, even all her appointed times to cease and lay waste her vines and her fig trees. And of which she has said, these are my rewards that my lovers have given me. And I shall make them a forest, and the beast of the field shall eat them. And I shall punish her for the days of the Baals, that word is lords, to which she burned incense and adorned herself with her rings and jewelry and went after her lovers and forgot me, declares Yahweh. Therefore, see, I am alluring her and shall lead her into the wilderness and shall speak to her heart and give to her vineyards from there in the valley of Accor as a door of expectation and there she shall respond as in the days of her youth as in the day when she came up from the land of Mitzrayim and it shall be in that day declares Yahweh that you call me my husband Ish and no longer call me my Baal my Lord and I shall remove the names of the Baals from her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day I shall make a covenant for them, the birds of the heavens, and with the creeping creatures of the ground, when bow and sword and battle I break from the earth, and I shall make them lie down in safety. And I shall take you as a bride unto me forever. Hallelujah. And take you as a bride unto me in righteousness and in right rulings and kindness and compassion. And I shall take you as a bride unto me in trustworthiness. And you shall know Yahweh. And it shall be in that day that I answer, declares Yahweh, that I answer the heavens and they answer the earth. And the earth answer, and the grain, and the new wine, and the oil, and they answer it, Yisrael. And I shall sow her for myself in the earth. Hallelujah. And I shall have compassion on her who had not obtained compassion. And I shall say to those who were not my people, you are my people. While they say, my Elohim. So this is talking about what? This is talking about a people that was her, his wife at one time. Something happened and there was a breaking up. And then there was a declaration of divorce. But then there was something else that occurs. Which is the Passover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When now he says, and I shall sow her for myself in the earth, and I will have compassion on her who had not obtained compassion, 
and I shall say to those who are not my people, you are no longer my bride. I have divorced you. Now you are my bride. Hallelujah. Because of the Passover, y'all. Hallelujah. For you are my people, while they say, my Elohim. First Peter 2 and 9 says, but you are a chosen race. This is what I'm talking about, chosen. We were chosen. He chose us out of generations of people to bring back and to say, now you are my people. Here is my covenant. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a set-apart nation. A people for a possession that you should proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness. Our generation, y'all, were in darkness. Into his marvelous light. Who once, hallelujah, were not a people. How can we do the Passover? Who once were not a people, but now the people of Elohim who had not obtained compassion, but now obtain compassion. Romans 9 and 15 says, For he says to Moshe, I shall favor whomever I favor, and I shall have compassion on whomever I have compassion. Father Yahweh is the one who chooses. He makes the decision on what he will do. Now, that is a direct quote from Exodus 33 and 19. I have compassion on whom I have compassion and favor on whom I have favor. Then Romans 9 and 25 sums it and 26 says, as he has says, says, as he says in Hosea 2, I shall call them my people who were not my people and her beloved who was not my beloved and it shall be in the place hallelujah in the place where it was said to them you are not my people there there they shall be called the sons of the living elohim that's right back to hosea 1, 9, and 10. Father Yahweh, that means we're going to be back in the land. Right. Hallelujah, that we're going back to the land. Right. Because he specifically says, in the place where they were, it was said, they were not my people. You are not my people. Lo, I mean, you are not my people. That they shall be called the sons of the living Elohim. How do we do the Passover legally? Hallelujah. This is how. And he said, and said, what would you give me? Hallelujah. What would you give me to deliver him up to you? And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So let's look at Zechariah 11 and 12, 11 and 11, 12 and 13. And I said to them, if it is good in your eyes, give me my wages. And if not, refrain. So they weighed out for my wages 30 pieces of silver. And Yahweh said to me, throw it in to the potter. Mm. Hallelujah. Yahweh said to me, throw it to the potter, the splendid price at which I was valued by them. This is Zechariah. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of Yahweh for the potter. Now, let's go forward in time. Matthew 27 and three, and it says, and Yehuda, and I'm going to read on down. Then Yehuda, he who delivered him up, Yeshua. Yehuda, he who delivered him, Yeshua, up. 
having seen that he had been condemned, Yeshua had been condemned, repented, this is Yehuda, repented, re and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and to the elders, saying, I have sinned in delivering up innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the dwelling place, is this not just what Zachariah spoke of? Throwing down the 30 pieces, the pieces of silver into the dwelling place, he left and went and hung himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not right to put them into the treasury, seeing they are the price of blood. Then Matthew 27 and 9 says, Then was fulfilled what was spoken of of Yermiyahu, the prophet, saying, And they took the 30 pieces of silver and the price of him who was pierced, on whom they of the children of Israel set a price. Zechariah said, you know what? If I'm guilty, if you're going to put me out there, you know what? 30 pieces of silver for my hire. 30 pieces of silver he gave for us. This is how we are able to do the Passover. Because the Passover says specifically, if you have a servant that you have bought for silver, then you do what? Circumcise him. Circumcise his heart. Circumcise his flesh. And then he can come and take part in the Passover. This is how we can take part in the Passover. By the redemption of the blood of the lamb, Yeshua our Mashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is Hallelujah. something definitely Hallelujah. to get excited about. Then in the conclusion, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, Therefore cleanse out the old leaven. This is Rabbi Shaul, Rabbi Paul. Therefore cleanse out the old leaven so that you are a new lump. As you are, hallelujah, come on now, we were old one time. We were of old. But he said, cleanse out that old so that you can do, do, do what? You can be renewed in Yeshua, Messiah, through the blood to a new lump. Hallelujah. As you are unleavened. For also Messiah, our Passover, was offered for us. So then, hallelujah. Can everybody read this together with me? So then, let us observe the festival, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. So my question to you is today, who is ready for Passover? So glad you joined us. We've been waiting for your presence to arrive all day. We're humbled you're here. We never back your feet and we refuse to leave.